My name is Ben Marlow, filmmaker and director, and today we're going to be looking at the iPhone 13 Pro Max. Max Pro? Nailed it. Did I nail it or not? It's Pro Max. Pro Max. Now I'm under no illusions that an Apple iPhone's tiny little sensor and tiny little lenses that are on the camera is going to be better than a £6,000 Sony FX6 cinema camera with a 35mm sensor. And of course, lovely lenses. Proper lenses. But nonetheless, I decided to make a little mock-up advert and shoot some scenes around the house which I could use both the phone and the FX6 on and have a little look at what they look like next to each other. Now I don't want to bang on about the quality of each camera, I think you can do that for yourselves. But arguably the shots are comparable, but I think if you did blow each one up onto a big screen, the FX6 would hold up much better than the iPhone footage. One shot that I did want to mention though was the final shot, and in a real world scenario of course if this was a paid job, we would have lit this scene to make the FX6 footage look a lot better. But what HDR mode on the iPhone does here really well is not blow out the background. So you've got a really good even exposure across the frame from the foreground to the background. So that's a big thumbs up in my opinion. So I went down to the riverside to try and get some more landscape type shots. And I can't, I'm not even going to compare these first two because I messed up the exposure so badly on the second shot for the FX6 that it gives me nightmares. I think on these big wide shots the iPhone holds its own really really well to be fair. This is where I really see myself using an iPhone out in the real world. On big wide shots like establishers where depth of field isn't a huge focal point. And this final shot is back into cinematic mode on the iPhone and I think this shot performs really well actually. Even the bokeh from the headlights on the cars in the distance look pretty real. What I did notice though is that the iPhone over sharpens footage which is very common with small sensor cameras. There are two main reasons why I wanted to make this video. The first one being cinematic mode. Cinematic mode is similar to the portrait mode for stills on your iPhone. Portrait mode allows you to shoot stills that look like they've been shot with a real camera with a decent lens on it by blurring out the background and making it appear like it's working like a real camera. Cinematic mode, well let's see what Apple says about cinematic mode. On iPhone 13 models cinematic mode applies a depth of field effect that keeps the subject of your video sharp while creating a beautifully blurred foreground and background. No way. Creating being the optimum word there. It's being created, it's not real life anyway. In the Photos app, you can change the focus subject where the effect is applied and adjust, that's not very good English, and adjust the level of background blur or depth of field in your cinematic mode videos. You can also turn off the effect. 
That all sounds very nice. And to be honest, it's quite a cool gimmick. Having used it, it's not entirely usable. It's very obviously fake. And you can see sometimes where the computer on board the phone hasn't got it quite right. And there's little bits of the background which actually are in focus. So cinematic mode isn't a complete failure, I wouldn't say. I wouldn't use it, I don't think, on big shoots, and I certainly wouldn't use it for the entirety of a video, but I would definitely happily use it in behind the scenes videos for getting shots uh, that look like they've been shot with a, a DSLR. I think the pros are gonna spot it a mile off, but that doesn't really matter for some content, and certainly for content creators where it really doesn't matter an awful lot, I think cinematic mode is great. Will it be replacing our cinema cameras? Absolutely not. Okay, the second reason that I wanted to make this video was because of the implementation of ProRes as a codec for iPhone 13. That was a hell of a mouthful. Anyhow, what is ProRes? ProRes, ProRes, where's his Pro? ProRes is a high quality video codec that Apple themselves developed. It retains a lot of information. We're now shooting with 10-bit rather than 8-bit, which is what the all phones, Apple phones before this used to shoot on. Um, and it's very cool, very swag, very handsome. I like it. Hold up, wait a minute. Something ain't right. If we stop the video clip here, we can see that there is a reflection of the actual lenses on the post here. I don't think that there are barn doors available for the iPhone 13, so this kind of thing I'm probably going to live with. As we've already seen, ProRes does offer a lot of latitude when color grading, meaning that we can maintain highlights and boost shadows and do a lot more with the image than we could have done with previous iPhone iterations. Of course, that level of quality does come with its downsides. A 10 second clip is going to take up about 990 meg, meaning that a minute of ProRes footage is going to be around six gigabytes. Whopping. This obviously has to be factored in when choosing how big the internal storage of your iPhone is. The bigger the better as always, oi oi. And that leads me on nicely to a potential problem, which is transferring the data. You can do it in Apple's photo software, or you can do it via AirDrop. But if you go out and shoot 100 gigabytes worth of data, and then want to put that onto your computer using AirDrop, you're going to be in for a long wait. Using photo is only going through the lightning cable, that isn't much faster either. And while we're talking about the logistics of actually editing this footage, let's quickly jump back to cinematic mode. Changing the amount of background blur, and the focus points is currently edited within the photo app on your iPhone. When you airdrop this to your computer, this information gets baked into the clip. That means that if you wanna change it later, you have to go back into your phone, change it on there, and then send the clip back to your software. I believe that Apple are working on an update for Final Cut Pro, which will allow you to change all of those parameters within the software, but currently that is not the case. So again, I'm probably never gonna go out and shoot a job where I use ProRes on an iPhone as the ACAM and the sole footage that I obtain for that job. But I definitely think it could be useful in certain circumstances. The phone is always in my pocket. So if I wanna get a shot really quickly and all the cameras have been packed away, for example, I can quickly grab that shot and have something that's pretty high quality in my pocket. I hope you enjoyed some of the video examples there. Again, the phone is not gonna be replacing a cinema camera, um, but it definitely does have its uses. Oh, if you're still there, oi oi. Just very quickly, the iPhone night mode, I think it's called, has also seen a very big upgrade. I've noticed that the shots are a lot crisper a lot sharper a lot more saturated and a lot less muddy so if you're into that sort of thing 
It's very nice. Bye.